Oh, that's the catchy sound of Soul Bossa Nova. You know what that means, folks? It means it's Free Speech Friday. Keep it going underneath, I like it. It's Free Speech Fridays, where we get a couple of people who have some idea about what they're on about, and we chew over the events of the week and anything else they want to have a rave about. Um, And today, who we got today? Well, firstly, a big thanks to Tina Nixon, um, who's had the old leg, the bot, and she's phoned it in from, uh, I imagine, her sick bed in the wire wrapper. Tina, a very good morning to you. You there, Tina? Have we got her? We yep, have got you, Tina. You yeah, we got, and we can yep. hear you now. How are you feeling? Awesome. Um, oh, I'm still, I'm still a bit dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> you never you never want to catch a really bad barky cold when you're 62 and got dodgy plumbing. I tell you. All you're right. Like, oh, Tita. Dying. Okay. Well, if you suddenly <laughs> if suddenly the line goes dead, we know that something terrible's happened. Uh, <laughs> also joining us, he was last on, on, on the program or on the platform uh, defending Brenton Faithful. Um, he is the leader of a new political party called Democracy New Zealand and a former national MP from up north. Uh, Matt King joins us. Matt, how's your week been? Oh, g'day, Sean. It's been great, mate. And I'll just let you know my plumbing is all great today. So all right, OK. Yeah. <laughs> OK, so you're going to have to... <laughs> you're going to have to carry the torch if Tina... Yeah. Like, I don't even want to think about it, to be honest. Uh, let's let's then get things kicked off. Firstly, I want to talk about... Look, and I, I talked today about a piece that Jess Berenson Shaw, left-wing academic, wrote in uh, Newsroom today calling anyone opposed to uh, Three Waters a racist, which is a pretty standard response. And racism for some, or being a racist, has for some time been the left's catch-cry insult to deplatform or to discredit anyone who doesn't agree with them. But it seems to me there has been a coordinated effort in recent weeks to make the term incel, which I understand is a young man who isn't having sex, though not through any choice of their own, and resents women. So this new term incel has been getting a lot of run in the media. People have been writing, believe it or not, stories about it. And I've noticed that on Twitter, the left are now using it as the go-to insult of choice. In fact, David Seymour got called an incel online a number of times yesterday. Um, do you guys think the term, A, there is such thing as an incel, and what do you think about the creation of labels to discredit people in political debate? Uh, Matt, we'll start with you. Yeah, look, I think, um, Sean, that it's a cop-out, you know, when they don't have a good argument in a debate, they don't have, they can't back up their argument, they just revert to insults or or labels on people, and, and, and it works really well. If you look at people that have tried to tried to debate the issues around COVID and around, um, you know, anything basically that is against the government narrative, you, you get labelled a, a racist or a, or, a, or, a, or a conspiracy theorist or a, there, any other name that they put on you. And, it, and, and that's what it does. It shuts people down. People don't want to engage because they, they, they're fearful of being labelled. And so for me, it's a cop-out. It's people that don't want to argue the facts and don't want to argue the science. All right. Um, do you think incel is a legitimate term? Oh, look, it's, it's a word used to describe, you know, I guess uh, it's, it's, uh, it's on people that I, I guess do exist. I know I do know that they, there's those lone gunmen that seem to have issues with, um, you know, relating to society and people and, and have a hatred for women. I, I guess there is those sorts of people around and that's a label that's put on to describe them. So I don't know how prevalent it is. I don't think it's a problem. Yeah, and you wouldn't them, think that David yeah. Seymour would, would, would represent a person like that. Or isn't a person oh, like? Oh no way! I mean, that's just that's just incredible, big, incredible insult against David, just to try and shut him down. It's, there's no way it's even close to truth. Yeah, uh, Tina, what do you yeah. reckon? Is this the, the trendy new it's not, it's hate not, label? It's not a new, t- it's not a new term. It's been around for quite a while. Um, one of the movies that they talk about that um, represents the incel culture is The Joker, um, with Joaquin Phoenix, and uh, it, it, it is. It, the, the true incel is really the guy sitting in the base or his dirty bedroom, um, eating pizza, on his computer, lives, um, and can't form relationships. And so it's been defined as a pocket of, of disenfranchised men who think they have a right to have sex with anyone, any female that they want. Uh, so so that, that's how it's been defined. I think there is a group of people who actually do fit that 
that um, picture. Yeah. Uh, and certainly the backgrounds of a lot of terrorists fit the incel background. Well, people you might call terrorists, I'd say nutters <laughs> with guns. But, I mean, David Seymour's had long-term relationships. He doesn't sit in front of his computer. He spends most of his time on the road. Yeah. And uh, he's not... I mean, so it's being a word that's being misused when it really has a very, very tight, small definition. Um, but it's, it, also, it also, also is, I think, a, a product of our time where we get this loneliness thing that's happening out there because people can't connect anymore, and the only way they can connect is through social media and the virtual stuff that doesn't have any emotional pingback in a, in a, real, a real sense. And so it only creates, it makes these people even worse than it would be yeah. normally if they didn't have social media. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's being bandied around just as a, a, a matter of um, convenience. I do think the word woke is overused the same way. Uh, you know, at the guilty. end of the day, there are people who are woke. Yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know we've got to be we've got to be a bit careful about that. I also have to declare an interest. I've worked with Jess before, Jess Barrett and Shaw. Yeah. Um, and um, she's actually a, she's a really nice woman. Well, um, it's funny, you know, talented. I've worked with Jess talented. Barrett. However, yeah. she is so wrong about what she's saying right at the moment around the three waters and racism. So she needs to do her homework. Yeah. So you read the same piece that that sort of outraged me yesterday. I, I listened to most of what you were saying on it this morning, and when she talks about that, we can't talk about co-governance because it's racist. Well, here's the thing. Rangi Tane here in the Wairapa put up a submission to the Three Waters saying this is not co-governance because in any other place but the South Island and Naitahu, uh, Maori don't get a, a, an equal seat at the table, and neither do councils. And so co-governance in its, in its purest form, is not going to happen with, this, with the current government model. And that affects communities as much as it affects Māori. So it's not co-governance. And people need to get that through their heads pretty quickly. Yeah. And Māori are starting to realise it and are pretty pissed yeah. off about Tina, it. Tina, well. the other thing was, everyone brings up Havelock North 2016. Ah, now there's the other thing. So... One of the problems with Havelock North is we never had a regulator who actually did anything. So Ministry of Health is in charge of drinking water standards. At the end of the day, the Ministry of Health never took a prosecution for years because they just, it was all too hard. So Havelock came and they needed to, and they put in a drinking, a drink, a drinking water authority, um, Tomata Arawai. And it was run by Bill Bayfield, who's just about due to um, leave. And it is the regulator, and I'll tell you now, it's already gnashing its teeth. So there has already been councils who have been called to account for failures in delivering good drinking water. So I... that was always the piece that needed to happen. It has happened, because Bill Bayfield knows what he's doing. And so that is the solution. You do not need four entities and, uh, for three waters. The regulation itself and a good um, regulator will actually be the thing that protects their drinking water. Not three waters, yeah. Matt, it is an issue, that this three waters, that it almost seems to me, Matt, it is, it, I don't know, it's the hill that Labor may die on this election. Yeah, and good riddance to them, because anyone that thinks that three waters is about protecting uh, protecting our water supply and, and the safety, and they used to have a lot more example as a... As, a, as a, you know, as an example, it's, it's a cop out. It's just a cop out, and I think, um, you know, they they if they want to do something as radical as three waters, you know, ca campaign on it, get a mandate, and then have a referendum before they do something as major as that, because they've just done it by stealth. And I think a lot of people realise this is what's happened. They realise that this government has just won won an election without campaigning on these things. Now they bring them out from under the carpet. And, and bring them I in by stealth. Yeah, OK. Oh, Tina's going to disagree. I'm sorry. I, I absolutely disagree with it. We need water reform. And, um, yep, Labor didn't, uh, didn't um, campaign on it. But even National and ACT, everyone agrees that we need water reform. It's just not this, mo this model is not right. Uh, and so I, we have, yeah, to, we have to have it. Yeah, OK. I, I, I understand that we need to improve our water supplies, but I think the idea of handing them over to a centralised agency and then handing them out what we think might be along iwi lines 
um, at a later date without without at least letting everyone know. It's what not the a long. E- it's not. It's wrong. not a long. It is not a long iwi lines. I mean, it, it, the, the, and, 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 and it's it's sort of roughly. In fact, they call it the the, um, the rugby lines. I think it, it's more in, in tune with the super. 10 or Super 12 franchise or whatever it is. Um, it, 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 so there's, it, it, it's not necessarily about iwi. And at the end of the day, as I've said, you've got one of those entities that has, I think it's 74 iwi in it. So how the hell is that going to be co-governance when they're only going to have one or two seats at the table? It's a nonsense It's a nonsense argument. And it's not the fundamental flaw in the Three Waters model. The fundamental flaw in the Three Waters model is how it's going to be financed and how it's going to be governed, not the co-governance issue, the levels but, of governance and the lack okay, but, of... Yeah, OK, but taking assets of, of councils that have been from ratepayers and having them under some sort of um, central, more centralised control without even letting anyone know this is what they plan to do, it, I have a real issue with that. I mean, if they have a plan, let us know what totally the plan was, with tell the all the voters. It, it, yeah. Yeah, totally. they've been really dishonest. They've been really dishonest around that. They keep saying that the share um, that they've yeah. that allows public ownership is, uh, is, is, is means that it's still an ownership of the public. Yeah. That share, and I'm yeah. a part of the water users group. That share is not a share. It's a, it's no. spelled S H A R E. There is no definition that that uh, that says that the S H A R E defined by the government for three waters has any of the rights and responsibilities of any normal share that you would get mm. in the normal mm. lexicon of the word. Yep. All right. Mm. Well, just, can yeah. I just say, by the way, you two are doing perfectly. I can just sit back and my coffee <laughs> <laughs> while you, you guys get, in, get into it. Look, if you think Three Waters is a mess, you want to see a mess in co- politics, all you got to do is look to the mother country um, geez, the Tories have made a dog's ear of that. Trust goes. They've got the guy who originally rolled Boris, uh, gets back, and then it turns out he's a billionaire with a tax dodging wife. Um, have you, yeah. either of you, ever seen more incompetence from a party that won an election in the oldest democracy in the world? That's just pretty bad. Um, he makes us look good, and that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think Sean I think Sean that's like a hot potato they're throwing around. You think a country is, uh, with, a, with the number of people that they've got and the, and the power of that of that party and they and they're struggling to find someone to represent them to lead them. I mean it, it, it is a real concern and no one seems to um, want it. You know they're throwing it around. There must be a lot of other competent people out there that could do that leadership role as opposed to the ones that have put their hands up currently. So it is a concern. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you think there are any parallels in New Zealand or not? Or is it just British people being British people? Um, I think it's British people being British people. The, par- the parallels are uh, not actually understand. Well, I, I, I can't even understand how they actually got, they got, it got so bad so quick. Yeah, I, I, I thought here are some simple rules. Win an election, have a majority in the parliament... Pick a leader, stick with them. That's kind of that's well, yeah, politics one hundred and one. Well, yeah, but also roll out policies that aren't going to be counter to basically your um, your, 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 your your catch cry, which was "I'm I'm another Maggie Thatcher," and then she mm. turns around and sort of um, does some sort of socialist type policies, and it was just weird. I mean, it was just totally, utterly weird. Uh, look, some speculation I, here, though, um, and we had Bryce Edwards on who admittedly, when I put the arm on him, said, oh, she probably won't. Some speculation our Prime Minister might walk before the next election. What do you think the chances are, Matt King, that Jacinda Ardern comes back from the ice all chilled out and says, ah, I'm going to go and do something else? Look, I I 100% believe that she won't ask for the next election. I mean, just recently you had that... um, someone throw a sword or smash a window in her office, just, I think, the last day or so... I, I truly believe that she uh, is, a, is going to be a liability for, for Labor. Um, she won't be able to campaign. I mean, she's probably got the biggest security detail of any Prime Minister ever now. I guarantee that they're saying to her, we cannot guarantee your safety in certain situations, hence why I don't think she had a proper white day last, last year. I think that she, she will step down 
um, because the writing is well and truly on the wall. And I think the last, the two local election, local body um, election results which she endorsed is, is, is clear evidence that she has now become the, 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 the dust, uh, stardust is well and truly gone. She's a, she's, she's, she, uh, in her my mind, she'd have to leave and then she'd have to move overseas, to, honestly. That's my I, thoughts. So you're saying she's gone yeah. burger before polling day. What about you, Tina? Uh, yeah, I'm sort of inclined to believe that she might too, and that's simply because she was always a bit of a fangirl of the John Key playbook, and it's go out on a high. So she'll she'll find something that's going to be a success. That's going to be pretty bloody hard though, um, in the next few months, and she'll jump at that point. Either that, or um, yeah, there'll be some there'll be something, but it, it makes sense for her to go um, in a political yeah. for for her for her own career. It makes sense for her to leave before the next election because she'll leave on a reasonable high um, for the, for, for, on the global stage and then she can take advantage of things on a global stage. And this is where I do agree with John Key. That's where she should be. She is an she is a, a awesome person in the international sta- stage and the diplomatic speak of the bollocks that is international politics at the moment. And, and she will fit right into that vacuous um, sort of onion thin uh, uh, type of veneer that you have for politicians on the world stage. She will be absolutely awesome. At that. <laughs> so you're saying being no, a, no, mean, a no, meaningless no. cipher for global wokeism is the perfect exactly. job for just. <laughs> perfect. perfect. Oh, absolutely well. perfect. No, no, tell us what you really some think. Of John Key stuff. He's, he's, it, and actually, Matthew Houston said it, saying the same sort of thing, you know? Yeah. It's not hard to see that she will make a difference in a, in a god-awful way, in that public relations way that, government, that yeah. um, international politics has gone. Yeah. Um, so, yes, it, it will provide an opportunity for someone to come up. But who's gonna, who is it going to be? Grant Robertson, who can't manage our finances, or bloody Andrew, who... Um, well, who I think, is, I is, think is the two our real our contenders... Our, the, the two real contenders, but the problem is they're not lesbians or women. Uh, I don't know that yeah. you've got to be... Yeah, I think you can be a lesbian no. bloke now, can't I think, you? Uh, no. I think Chris Hipkins and Woodhouse are, are, are the two contenders. Yeah. No, yeah. Kerry Woodhouse. Allen. Woods. No, Woods. No, sorry, Woods, yeah. John, Michael Woods, Woods, yeah. yeah. We don't want a national guy. In yeah, yeah. No, uh, Woods. Michael Woods. <laughs> and also um, Kerry Allen, maybe. Yeah, I think Kerry's quite good, but I, I, I would put my money on Hipkins if there was any of them, probably. Yeah. And he's got the minority <laughs> thing because he's a ginger um, as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say, though, I would just like to mention, I think it is very sad uh, that the violence against Jacinda Ardern's office, which has happened to Same. leaders before, I think it is really sad that politicians feel that unsafe. I don't know that it's any worse than it ever has been in the past. Oh, I think it is. I think it is. Really? After being out on even the election trail on in, in local government, it is... There is, a, there is a seam of violence out there of, and a hate and anger, and it still hasn't dissipated. Yeah, that's just the anti-vaxxers, and, Tina. And, and, yeah, well, maybe it is hey, the anti sure, sure. No, it's not the... <laughs> look, actually, not... I, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a bit like Matt on this one, or on some things, that is that we do need an inquiry around what ha- yep. how, how COVID rolled out, and, we, and the mandates were a pretty sticky issue um, uh, as yep. well. But at the end of the day, the people who are really at the extremes are not... They're extremists yeah. who find a cause. They yeah. are not people with a cause who get extreme, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, so I they agree are with all, They're damaged goods, and those people are, are more damaged now because of what we've gone through in the last three years, and their propensity to violence is much greater. Yeah, we're trolling. Hey, Sean, can I jump in there? Yeah. So, so for me, I, I see that there is an underlying level across our communities of people that are so, are so unhappy, angry, hurt, yeah. um, discriminated against, violated against in, in every way that are not violent and don't wish, and I, I want to add that the, the violence directed against Cinder Ardern or any, any politician is, is abhorrent and we oppose it, but there is an underlying um, theme there of people that are just feeling so unhappy with what's happened over the last two or three years and they some of them vent on Facebook and on social media yeah. and and you know, and, and but they, they it will never amount to anything. I mean, my time in the police, ninety five percent of the, the threats of violence that I ever yeah. encountered was always, always verbal and never never initiated into actual action. Yeah, and so it's not pleasant, of, but it does happen. You know, it does happen. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Look, I want to move on to another story that, apart from 
Some excellent work by Kate McNamara from The Herald hasn't been getting mainstream coverage. There is an investigation underway into the appointment of some relatives in Nanaia Mahuta by the Public Service Commission. And documents released and highlighted by The Herald this week show that at least at one instance when she was Associate Minister of Māori Affairs, she lied about her involvement in the appointment of a niece to a, uh, a consultant position on the preparation of the controversial Hipuapua report. It is clear from the Herald's um, coverage and research by uh, the alter ego person Thomas Cramner that Nanaia Mahuta lied to the media about this. She was directly involved in the appointment of a family member to a paying government job um, and she breached the cabinet manual uh, I talked to um, Brendan O'Neill, editor for Spiked Online, political uh, editor for Spiked Online, about this. He said, if that was Britain, you'd be gone. You would have resigned. Why do we put up Matt King with a lower level of accountability on issues like this um, than elsewhere in the world? Look, I, I think this is, a, this is a symptom of this current government. They seem to be not being held to account and not being accountable um, unlike previous Labour governments and, and, and previous national governments, they, they seem to um, operate with impunity in terms of their responsibility and, and there's no, there doesn't seem to be any um, re, um, result or penalty for, for mis, misdeeds. And I think that st stops with Jacinda and she, she won't deal with her errant um, you know, ministers and, and issues, she just don't, won't deal with it. And that's just a uh, leadership issue in it. And to me, it's corruption. You know, it's, it's absolute corruption. And I've got to the point in, in where I don't believe anything this gov the current government say. I mean, they've lied so much to us that I just feel they lack, they lack all credibility. And, and so, and I think New Zealanders are waking up to that fact. They're realising, you know, it was something that used to get dealt with in previous governments. Um, is not being dealt with, it's just being swept under the carpet and, and people can see that and that's going to be reflected in the ballot box next election. Yeah. Tina? Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I have a real struggle with where she's coming from right at the moment and, and I, I'm, I cannot understand why she hasn't handed in a resignation, especially over that last revelation. Uh, the other thing is, is no one, there's been a lot of speculation around it, but no one has actually asked the right questions. And that is, what is the competency of the relations in terms of the provision of work to the government departments that they've got the contracts for? And I think you'll find that some of them, well, some of them haven't been completed. Um, some of them, actually, I think, in one some case, of them have not no been work. completed. That's right, and they've and been paid them, out. One of them, yeah, I think one of them may not have even been started. And and then there seems to be some very big figures around a number of hui. Um, and I'd like to know just how many people turned up. And I think if you divided the if you divided the number of people that they've actually got to, because basically what they seem to do, or a husband seems to do, is just organise hui's for people. Um, yeah. And so if he's not very good at it and doesn't get enough people along to it, uh, then uh, he's not he's not even yeah. very good. So why where where is the system within government that says this contract is actually really bloody useless? Yeah, uh, and and the, uh, there isn't. That's yeah. actually one of the things that um, we've talked about in years um, in years past within govern government is c c some of these consultancies can jump from government department to government department, and everyone thinks they're really good because someone's too scared to give them a bad reference, and so they end up with another heap of work. And there yeah. is no system within government that actually does checks and balances. Well, the other problem is, well, like like the doc is involved in this. Well, someone very senior at DOC was actually the recipient of an appearance fee from William Gannon's or Ormsby for one of these suicide yeah. hooies. And there's all sorts of Byzantine it's, connections it's between people. Very weird. And, and nepotism is, uh, you know, we always talk about the old boys network and it's always been strong. We've always known that in, that, in, in yeah. New Zealand society. The brown network is no different. The nepotism, and specifically within Tainui, um, and uh, uh, it's, it's not a meritocracy. Uh, and so people seem to rise up due to their family connections rather than on merit. And I'm not saying all Tainui, um, because that would be wrong, but there is still a very strong theme of nepotism in some yeah. tribes. And I guess and that's how a truck driver out. from Narawahia gets to be king. Hey, yeah, it is in a lot of ways. You know, it is, and it's, and it's. I'm, I mean, I'm not a monarchist, never will be, and it, so I've never, and I've always had these arguments. I had them in the past with Mark Solomon when he started to sidle up with Tainui. Yeah. It was just like, piss off. I don't believe in the monarchy 
in the English sense, so why would I believe in a monarchy in, in a Maori sense? To me, it's just a, it's a nonsense, and it's, and it's a, in its own soft, evil way, it, it allows people to do things um, for no other reason than the, of their, their way, that, who, who they were born to. And tell that's us, just wrong. Tell us what you really feel, Tina. Guys, that has flown, but we're out of time. Can I just say, Tina, incredibly well done. One wouldn't have thought you were dying. Um, which I'll now let oh, you go. Well, I, only, I, I, turned, I turned off my mic a couple of times so I could have a cough. All right. <laughs> uh, Matt King, lovely to talk uh, to you again. And we didn't get to cover everything I wanted to talk about. That was a fantastic uh, Free Speech Friday session, guys. I thank you very much indeed and hope we can talk uh, with you both again uh, soon here on the platform.